Verified Media, we often call ourselves a music rights data services company. The primary mission is to build a systematic way to answer what I think of as the fundamental question that essentially we as a community within music need to answer, which is who owns the rights to the song? Historically, we have a very product-oriented and product-centric sort of B2B set of verticals, labels, publishers, think of the CD era or the vinyl era. What has changed, right, is that it's now an access business. The main issue there is as things have moved to access, a whole series of historical best practices has become analog in a digital age. And streaming services now represent a overwhelming majority of the revenues generated by music IP. And so the relevance of making sure that you can keep track of this much more accelerated consumption and royalty sort of creation is what makes this very, very relevant. Typical streaming service like a Spotify or an Apple Music actually have over 60 million recordings accessible at the click of a button on your phone. That's what we mean by access. You don't no longer need to own a piece of music. You can just have it be available. Our service will make sure that the PROs significantly streamline the collection process due to the availability of who owns the rights, who is representing for that particular right, for that particular song at that point in time. I often use the analogy, you know, everyone knows Elton John. A lot of people in the music industry know Bernie Tobin. But maybe not everybody knows Bernie because Elton's the one that's sort of the marquee name on the recording and so on. But Bernie owns a lot of rights too. So how do you get the composers paid? So that's been always an issue. In the digital world, where streaming services like Spotify pay composer, performer, and also a third royalty stream called public performance royalties, per stream, is you do have to identify the full set of owners and representatives in order to actually accurately process the music consumption market. The very simple way to think about it is, there are two parts to every song. There's a composer, or multiple composers, more often than not, and a performer, or multiple performer. So Irving Berlin wrote White Christmas. He's a composer, that's only one. Michael Buble himself has probably done 50 versions of it. That's a recording by Michael Buble. Christmas. You know, by the way, these days, you don't even have to use a label or a publisher to get your music out, right? You can think of it as the, the ways in which you monetize has become this kind of really big web or matrix that you need to keep track of. So our job is to ensure that all those elements and all those relationships are identified, stored, and communicated to the people that care. Just we're a rights management data solution that uses the blockchain. The chain is good at a bunch of things, and we use it for a specific purpose as part of our technology solution. Communicating changes and registering changes in sort of an agnostic and egalitarian way. So we use it for those two things. Traditional ways in which uh, data is communicated in the music industry doesn't sufficiently, it does it to a degree, but doesn't sufficiently allow for this kind of dynamicism that I described multiple parties, looking at data together, recreating the truth, sending it out into the world. So we have a very um, <clears throat> proprietary, if you want to call it that, but a sophisticated data schema that better aligns the data sets that the industry traditionally uses to rights owners and rights representatives. Basically, there's two models you can consume music uh, on your phone. You have a paid streaming service, there's also a free service or many free services out there, Pandora being an example. Spotify has a free service, which are ad-driven. YouTube, you can think of as an ad-driven business model. On average, you're getting paid per stream. So when I put a push a button and listen to your song, the aggregate royalty that gets paid is below a penny. That's why it's a micro penny or you know, less than a penny. 
Uh, it can be as little as a third or even a tenth of a penny. So there's trillions of spins going on, like I mentioned earlier, four trillion or so, according to some people, but it's paying less than a penny per stream. Or our ambition would be to make it that simple for the typical creator, where rights data isn't this like, I got to load it up into 10 different places. I don't even know if I'm getting paid, but I put it here, it propagates. And if something changes, I can just say, hi, this changed, right? Again, I'm probably exaggerating a little bit on the oversimplified side, but I think that's possible. The tools exist. I do think it gives me a unique perspective because in finance, you're doing transactions with significant number of zeros next to it all the time. Data better be right. I spent you know 25 years on, uh, basically on Wall Street managing trading businesses. So I have a very profound appreciation for the importance of data management and doing it quickly and all this stuff. So I grew up playing the saxophone um, in high school and in college. I ran our college jazz ensemble. I was also a radio disc jockey in high school and in college. I moved to New York in the mid 80s to start working on Wall Street and I joined a rock band playing bass. I still play bass 35 years later in a rock band in New York City for fun. My brother is a professional musician and a uh, music technology professor in the UC system in California. There's been always been part of my life. This digital transformation fascinated me and in particular making it friendlier for creators, which is easy to say, but I wanted to do an entrepreneurial journey in that and hopefully contributing in a small way. I think we can make this better for creators. It's a very tough world for creators to get paid. And a little bit of the harder to get paid is about moving that infrastructure into something that is more modern. And I think that's essentially what, what has excited me about doing this piece of the journey.